The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org. This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tucker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Howdy. Hey, Peg. Good to see you, my dear. Hello. Gwen Tompkins, yay, host of the public radio show called Music Inside Out, heard online at musicinsideout.org. Welcome back. Thank you so Hello. much. Hello. And so nice to see Irene <laughs> Korea Kadu, soprano. I should say Korea Kadu, email. Okay. Yes. Soprano and uh, professor of voice at Louis Loyola University. <laughs> yes. Good to see you. Thank yes. You. Good to see you. And Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News and TheaterCriticism.com. Hello, sir. <laughs> Poppy, restaurant news, yay. Well, please allow me <laughs> to introduce you to <laughs> Beggar's Banquet. Ooh. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh, remember Street Fighting Man and Sympathy for the Devil? Well, it's a fabulous restaurant now, too. Beggar's Banquet opened up in the Lower Garden District. They're on Britannia street in this really beautiful space big windows it's airy it, it you walk in and you're just expecting to see mick jagger himself at any <laughs> moment it's contemporary new american fair uh, it's a family restaurant chef mike delono his wife patty and daughter cat all from the East Coast have settled down here and they are making some fabulous food and fun. So they are serving dishes like fried green tomatoes with burrata, there's seared tuna, um, there's a duck leg confit with butternut squash, pecans, Ooh. and hot honey. So the, the the menu is just all over the place when it comes to nationalities and that sort of thing. It's all really fresh and really good. They have pan-seared scallops with a crab hash. The pan-seared redfish is served with blue crab, a uh, roasted corn makshu, and a lemon tarragon for oh. blanc. It's beautiful, but they are doing so many fun things during Jazz Fest. And both restaurants I'm talking about tonight, you know, Jazz Fest reservations are hard to get. So it's good to think of some places that maybe nobody knows about yet. And Beggar's Banquet falls into that category. So that under my thumb cocktail is a milk <laughs> punch that is brandy with a candied house-made pecan orgeat and heavy cream. They've got all sorts of inventive cocktails there. You show proof of attendance that you've been to the Jazz Fest, and they'll give you a free Jazz Fest shot. <laughs> and they serve dinner every night except Tuesdays when they're closed with weekend brunch, too. Wow. And, you know, the hospitality industry, the tourist industry, New Orleans has the best hotels because we need them. And there is a new restaurant in the Lowe's on mm. Poitras. And, of course, we're familiar with that space because it used to be Cafe Adelaide. And mm -hmm. you, you will go into that space and feel so at home with those beautiful, intimate, big curved booths, but most important, the food is fabulous. So there's barbecued shrimp, which you know is sort of de rigueur on New Orleans menus. There is a really special crab cake that comes with a sherry lobster cream sauce and frizzled beets. Who knew? I, I, well, what is that? Saffron frizzled beets. There's baked <laughs> chicken with potato gratin, herb crusted black 
drum with mataki mushrooms. And I'll tell you what was really interesting to me was a new way to beignet. That is their <laughs> beignet, and it's made with a puff pastry. So it's got layers. It's very interesting and delicious. And they have dinner seven nights a week, too. Now, new, coming to New Orleans for the first time, I'm alerting all you wine lovers. This is Wine Spectator's Grand Tour. And it's Friday, April the 26th. You know, Wine Spectator sets the standard for the entire country when it comes to wines. They're going to be pouring 230 incredible wines that night, all with 90 points or over on Wine Spectator's 100-point scale. And they're kicking off this year's tour right here in New Orleans. Of course, there's going to be delicious, delicious things to eat, too. But, you know, this is like... Um, the New Orleans wine and food experience on steroids because <laughs> of the quantities of wine. So after they're here, they go to Las Vegas and they go to Denver. General admission is two seventy-five. You get to drink from seven till ten, and for three seventy-five, you can have it those rare fine wines from six until ten. Jesus! Wow. All right, Poppy. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, wow, the French Quarter Festival. So many things, but especially the music. So I ask. Dear Gwen, to kind of split it up, and you are very kind to say yes. I will sure. come back next week to, yes. to complete this, but let's at least get started if sure. we look to the next week. Well, I'll be very happy to. So yes, as as Peggy, you're right. You, you asked me to talk about Thursday and Friday of the uh, of the French Quarter Festival. So we're talking about next week. That's yes. right. So this coming Thursday and Friday, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you'll be able to notice all of this on your French Quarter festival app, which is now on your cell phone or mobile device if you want one. Um, I like the paper, so that's why I'm using paper <laughs> today. But um, but anyway, come Thursday, uh, after the main the, the morning parade, because there's always a parade that begins the festival at 930, and it's going to be uh, on, begin in the 200th block of Bourbon Street, um, this is the time to mill. I'm going to mill. Um, and you might want to mill too, and see. Uh, and, and I think I'm going to go to the uh, to the um, New Orleans Jazz Museum and see their new exhibit on early jazz, which is which is going to which is actually called Congo Square to the World: The Early Jazz of New Orleans, um, the Early Years of New Orleans Jazz. But then after that, I'm very much interested in um, going to see in the afternoon a, a band called Ife. And Ife is a really interesting band. This is drumming music that's inspired by African, Puerto Rican, and Cuban rhythms, um, as well as sort of Yoruban and uh, Cuban spiritual traditions. The, 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 the center, the heart of Ife is a man by the name of Otura Moon. And he moved to New Orleans just before COVID, and uh, he's a real creative force behind the band. And the instruments are all percussive instruments, but they have been uh, electronicized, so to speak speak. So they are, they sound completely different than you would think that they would sound. You know, a conga, um, for instance, sounds very different um, than what, what we've heard um uh, what we've heard before. And uh, all of the sounds are really unexpected and really beautiful and very spiritual. And so Ife is going to be on the Abita stage on Thursday from 3.30 until 4.30. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Judith Owen and her gentleman callers. Now, they're, <laughs> they're competing a little bit with Ife. They're going to overlap a little bit, but not the whole time. And I, I have to say, I really enjoy this, this outfit. Um, you know, Judith Owen is the Welsh recorder artist and she lives in New Orleans um, part of the year and she's put together this incredible cabaret band and, and it's first rate. We're talking David Torkinowski on piano of course, Kevin Lewis on trumpet, <laughs> Ricardo Pascal on saxophone, Lee Warshawski who is wonderful on double bass and the extraordinarily talented Portuguese drummer uh, Pedro Segundo. Now that is the original lineup. I'm, I don't know if everyone will be there on, on this coming Thursday but I certainly hope they will be. <laughs> um, they They've been touring the world, and um, they put out an album last year featuring the the songs of what they call badass women in jazz. <laughs> you know, and it's really I thought the album was going to get a Grammy nomination. It, it really deserved one, I thought. Um, and a lot of the um, material is, was actually written by Nellie Lutcher, who comes mm. from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, Judith Owen and her gentleman callers will be sassy and saucy, mm -hmm. and they're going to be at uh, the NewOrleans.com stage from 3:50 until 5:10. 
I always throw in Bonorama because Bonorama is just too much fun to miss. <laughs> um, they're a fantastic uh, uh, horn um, outfit, and uh, if you were lucky, then Mark Mullins is going to sing because he's got Ooh. a terrific voice. And bon Bonorama is going to be at the Abita stage from 4:50 until 6:10. And lastly, on Thursday, Big Frida, whom I interviewed recently at the New Orleans Book Fair and uh, and for Music Inside uh, Inside Out, of course. And Frida is just terrific. Um, you know, Frida's. <laughs> You've interviewed Frida, actually, yes, I have. Peggy, yes, and I it was have. a terrific Quite interview a at the Jazz Festival. Well, thank you very much. I loved it. Pleasure. And Frida's memoir, which is uh, came out a few years ago, Big Frida, God Save the Queen Diva, it reveals this extraordinary life of love and trouble and more love, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's But the thing is, everyone gets caught up in the twerking and in the dance, but when you listen to Frida's lyrics, then you really see a whole different side. It's extremely positive, you know what I mean, what Frida sings about, extremely uplifting. I, I look out for the song Platinum, which is one of my favorites. I love that song. Uh -huh. You're Platinum, she says, you know. And so Big Frida will close out Thursday at, Fr at uh, French Quarter Fest from the Chevron stage from 645 until, until 8 o'clock. And then on Friday, uh, you know, the, this remind you know, my picks on Friday, for myself at least, I'm suggesting that you might want to go, you know, sort of are, begin to be rooted in the, the beginning of French Quarter Fest, which was supposed to be a festival about traditional uh, New Orleans jazz music, you know? And so I would like to um, begin my listening pleasure with uh, Shannon Powell and his traditional all-star band on the NewOrleans.com stage from 1245 until 2. Shannon Powell, the king of Treme, of course, he's a delight, he's a crowd pleaser. He came up as a mentee of Danny Barker, of course, and he d takes a lot of his showmanship from Barker. So he's, he's so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that, uh, that, that uh, band, the Shannon Powell traditional all-star band, is going to be, again, at the NewOrleans.com stage on Friday from 1245 until 2. Now, sometimes New Orleanians actually are born in Morocco. <laughs> and that's why you have to go and see, at least I always want to go uh -huh. and see, Mahmoud Shuki, who is a fantastic master guitarist. And his music is exciting and sometimes tender and always hypnotic. I brought a friend from NPR to see him at Snug Harbor not long ago. And my friend actually immediately got him to come to uh, Texas, come to Austin, Texas to play. Because, you know, people can't believe how good he is. And uh, Mahmoud Shuki will be at the Pan American Life Insurance Group stage on Friday from 5.30 until 7.00. 7 p.m. Now, lastly, so much has been um, is being said right now about Beyonce's new country music mm -hmm. album, and uh, and 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 the point, of, I suppose, of the album is to sort of bring attention to. Uh, the crowd of black people who've been part of country music from its very beginning, from the Carter family, you know what I mean, from the beginning of the, um, from the Grand Ole Opry. And, um, and um, these folks have never really gotten a lot of media coverage over the years. But in recent years, there have been a number of black songwriters and singers in country, including Mickey Guyton and Brittany Spencer and Darius Rucker and Reese Palmer, as well as Chapel Hart. Now, this is a Mississippi trio. They are a family band. They have wonderful harmonies, and they're getting a lot of attention from television from Dolly Parton and I'm curious to see them right. so the to the Chapel Heart band is going to be at the Abita beer stage closing out Friday Love from the 640 variety. to 8 o'clock yeah <laughs> thank really you we'll hear more from you next week definitely which we look forward to mm -hmm. Irene oh my goodness so Rogers and Hammerstein so nice to hear the names <laughs> Rogers and Hammerstein so um, students are performing um, in, in a free concert on Sunday exactly and and tell us about you it brought a clip of what we can prepare to see. Set yes. that up for us. Yes. Well, here we are in rehearsals for our concert this uh, Sunday. We are paying a tribute to Rogers and Hammerstein because a, they are one of the most beloved uh, songwriting duo. And um, the timing was actually perfect, as um, my brilliant colleague Carol Rausch uh, pointed out, because 2023 marked the 80th anniversary of their collaboration together. And also 2024 is the 75th anniversary of South Pacific. Uh, that wow. was, uh, in mm -hmm. fact, presented on April 7th, when our concert is, <laughs> oh. in New York at the Majestic Theater. So here are our students. We are going to see um, a clip from our men our ensemble um, performing Come With Me from the Boys from Syracuse, staged and choreographed by our 
talented senior student, B. Shalpert. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move on to, um, I can't say no, from Oklahoma <laughs> by our <laughs> MT uh, musical theater student, Kaylin Turkmany, mm -hmm. staged by Melissa Marshall. All right, great. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> Well, that was a tease. We would love to have heard much more. <laughs> but we are talking Sunday at 3 p.m. Nunmaker Auditorium. Mm -hmm. and, and this is which building? It's the Monroe Hall okay. on Calhoun. Um, right off Loyola. St. Charles. Yes. Uh, and free. Such free a and deal. Open. It's such a, it's, hopefully it's such a pleasant afternoon for everybody. Oh, Sunday and afternoon. It's, and Please it's come. so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good to see you. It's always great Look to be here. Look forward to having you back. You said you might be doing a concert in a few months. Mm -hmm. as well yes but yes. uh and um and that you're there and that you're teaching new orleans yes. is so lucky to have you in that Thank capacity you. i'm lucky to be here in that capacity as well and moving on to alan well there's an old adage poppy you can't always get what you wanna <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna get some theater now <laughs> so you know you've heard about going from the sublime to the ridiculous we're gonna do this in reverse because we've had back-to-back -back openings for all these multiple companies finally we're in sort of a lull and we can talk about some other things coming up New Orleans is really unusual in that manner, uh, you know, Peggy, and, and I guess that uh, Errol might say we have a bifurcated theater season as a result. <laughs> so Le Petit's brilliant production of Beautiful is closing down this weekend with a few new stars taking on some of the key roles. And JPS is also uh, taking Jesus uh, Christ Superstar on the road, if you will, to Hammond with replacements for Jesus and Mary Magdalene. But a new show is bowing this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. It's a puppet show, but it's not for the kiddies. This is called Death to realism. Oh. It stars Tyler Nacho <laughs> and it promises to be very cutting edge and probably more than a little risque. Tickets are $25 for the late afternoon show on Saturday and of course the Sunday evening performance. You can get to the site by going to Tyler's website at tylernacho.com and it's on Louisa Street again. Uh, as I mentioned, JPS is in Hammond uh, this weekend at the Columbia Theater for Jesus Christ Superstar tomorrow night, one night only. So if you missed it, go to jps.org for, uh, for ticket details etc. But next weekend will be the British farce and one of the funniest plays on record, Noises Off. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. This production is directed by Harold Hino. It'll star Jonathan Merez, Leon Conovespri, Mary Lee Jacobs, Bailey Gabrish, and Benjamin Clement, among others. So that'll be starting up on April the 12th and it'll run through the 21st at the JPAC, Jefferson Performing Arts Center. And while you're at the JPAS website checking that one out, I want to also have you check out their 2024 season. It's going to be really kind of interesting begins with their student production for this summer, which is, of course, taking us to the little village of Anatevka, uh, as the middle and high schoolers will team up to present Fiddler on the Roof Jr. Uh, and that show will be in rehearsals for the early part of July. And then in the third week, they'll present that show uh, to the public at the West Wego Performance Theater that's recently been reopened after being, of course, damaged from Hurricane Ida. So that's Fiddler on the Roof Jr. in July. And then we have a bit of a wait until... 
August. That's when the creatives uh, at JPS put on one of the best Andrew Lloyd Webber productions. They'll start their rehearsals in August. And this one is the one I'm talking about, School of Rock, based on the movie, of course, with Jack Black. Uh, School of Rock is hilarious and impressive because the kids actually perform the work as a band on stage live. Uh, so again, that'll be starting up September 2024. And then finally returning to New Orleans after at least two decades away is the amazing Jekyll and Hyde, the musical, which features music by Frank Wildhorn, a book by Leslie Bercuse, mm -hmm. and lyrics by Bercuse, Wildhorn, and Steve Cuden. Uh, that arrives just prior to Thanksgiving in November. And both of these musicals will be on stage at the JPAC on Airline Drive. Also, because of contractual obligations, they will present a murder mystery in October in West Wego, but they cannot tell me or advertise what that mystery is at this time. <laughs> okay. so, so stay tuned. I haven't a clue. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, then in November, also at West Wego, is Yabo Yabo. Blonsky's solo work about Ernest Hemingway. It's titled mm. The Leopard. If anybody remembers uh, mm. the, the title re reflects the snows of Kilimanjaro. Remember there was the, the leopard that's mm. in that that represents uh, a literary device if you will. It focuses on the last day of Papa Hemingway. What should be a great lot of e exposition I would imagine but, but I'm looking forward to hearing who's being cast in this. Apparently they're bringing in someone from out of town. Uh, then in November it's time for Christmas of course and Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker returns to JPA as directed by uh, Kenneth Beck at JPAC, while Elf Jr. will play at the West Wego Performance Theater. And then, prior to Mardi Gras, it's time for Murder on the Nile. Now, that's the Agatha Christie play based on her very own 1937 novel, Death on the Nile. Okay, that'll be starting up, uh, and then... Just in time for Black History Month, JPS is presenting Elvis and Ali. That's a two-hander by Tom Shrek. Ah. That really suggests what it might have been like during the time they actually did spend time together. The King wow. and the Greatest got together. <laughs> this will play at the uh, West Wego Performing Arts Center. And I'm most interested in, in seeing uh, that they're going to be bringing back this wonderful post-Mardi Gras near the return of Billy Elliot. And again, this will be directed uh, and choreographed by Kenneth Beck. That's going to be the first time it's been on the local stage since it was brought for the first time at Rivertown. There's season will end with a biographic play It's titled Joe and Marilyn. Yes, it's about wow. <laughs> Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe. And mm. this one will be directed by Janet Shea. It'll be cast yeah. locally. I can't wait to see who's going to be doing that. All this information can be found on JPS.org right now. Tickets for the season will be available soon. They're not yet now. But, uh, you know, just check that out. And last, but by no means least, I wanted to get everybody up to speed on the NOLA project. They are going to have an outdoor mounting, not at the Sculpture Garden, but this one is uh, the NOLA project's James Martell, he's going to be actually changing up a little bit of Shakespeare. Uh, he's one of the founding members of the NOLA Project and a local playwright. He's helming The Tempest Reimagined. This is going to be at the Greenway Station. That's where we used to get our motor vehicle inspection done. That's <laughs> Breakdown Station. And the show will open right after Jazz Fest and run for three weekends featuring a number of favorite performers including Leslie and Keith uh, Clavery, Kerry Armistead, Kristen Witt, Ashley Record Santos, Monica Harris, Pamela Roberts, oh, right. Megan Whittle, and Jessica Lazan. And then the last thing I'm, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, will be, uh, you know, a, another thing coming up later on about okay. a real, okay. a real show going at the Sanger. Thank you so much. Time for picks. I will begin. Clarinetist Tim Laughlin and his band will perform in concert Friday, April 5th, at the New Orleans Jazz Museum at the old U.S. Men and Esplanade. Go to nolajazzmuseum.org. My husband Errol and I will be signing our books concerning lost restaurants, Mardi Gras, and local history. Saturday Saturday from 2 to 4 at Barnes & Noble right there on Veterans Boulevard. Check out the numerous gallery openings on Julia Street Saturday, jamminonjulia.com. Over on Magazine Street, New Orleans novelist Moira Crone has an art opening Saturday at the A. Cuneo Sullivan Gallery. Crone's exhibit is titled Looking Out, Looking In. Grand opening Saturday evening from 5 to 8 p.m. Also, landscapes by the late beloved artist Roland Golden will be available at the Jillian Mack Gallery on Magazine Street. Uh, the opening will be 6 to 9 p.m. on Saturday. Now, Poppy. Okay, this weekend, Hogs for the Cause out at the UNO Lakefront. Don't miss it, all you pig lovers. <laughs> and Monday night, the American Culinary Federation Gala at the Lakefront Airport. If you are a foodie, go see the chefs. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Gwen, mm -hmm. um, two events at the Broadside next week. Layla McCalla, who's going to be performing on Tuesday, April 9th at 7 p.m. She's the Haitian-American string player, cello, guitar, banjo, uh, formerly of the Carolina Chocolate Drop. 
Pops. She's going to be there uh, releasing a new album. And then the next night, on Wednesday, it's going to be Helen Gillet, the cellist extraordinaire. She's presenting Rebel, and that's going to be um, at uh, 8 o'clock on Wednesday, right. April 10th. Irene, we have a performance of The Messiah coming up right. on April 21st at 3 p.m. in Roussel Hall. Featuring the Loyola Chorale with Loyola students are soloists and conducted by Meg Frazier. Very good. Thank you, Alan. Again, as I mentioned, only this weekend playing is Strauss and Adams' classic that made Andrea McCardle a household name, Annie. It was the last Broadway show not to use microphones and was one of the last to allow children stars to work an entire eight-show week schedule. The <laughs> non-equity show runs Friday through Sunday, and I'll see you at the theater. Thank you. And I have just a few more picks. The New Orleans Friends of Music presents the Jerusalem Quartet Monday evening at Dixon Hall on the Tulane campus. Friendsofmusic.org for tickets. Each Wednesday in April, evenings with Enrique, Latin music in the City Park's Botanical Garden among the sculptures by beloved artist Enrique Alferas. Next week, harpist Patrice Fisher with her band ARPA and guest Margie Perez along with Oscar Ramirez, free to Louisiana residents. Refreshments are available. My goodness, there was a lot of stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> and Irene, uh, we, we talked uh, before we started our show. I wanted to ask you, what among the classes that you teach, mm -hmm. uh, tell me about how many uh, different languages are you <laughs> referring to here? Well, I teach German, uh, French, and Italian diction. Uh, yeah, well, I spend a lot of we time We got a in brag Zurich. on you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And it's very enjoyable, and uh, the students love it. And um, I guess it's a... Uh, perk of being from Europe and having all these and languages. You're originally from yeah. Greece. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from how Greece. is your wonderful husband, Brian? He's very, very well. He's up at Westminster Choir College at Ryder University teaching at the moment. Wonderful. Please tell him hello for I us. I will. Too. Thank and you. thank you also very much. Great to see you thank again, you. Gwen. Great and to of see course, you all. My, my pals here. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org. This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area.